The Ryan Reese Show from Southern California. This is The Ryan Reese Show. Post your questions using at Ryan Reese on his Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook. Are you ready? All right. Well, you know what? This show tonight is going to be amazing because I'm back in Florida at the Zeal School of Ministry. The, the guys I have on the show, you guys have heard them before. We got Mike Francisco from Restore Skate in Florida. Jairus Hodges from uh, Calvary Chapel Fellowship in St. Pete and the Zeal School of Ministry. A lot of you guys that have been to our website, at the bottom of our the page, our front page, it has a, a link. You can watch the YouTube video that shows the ministry done here in Zeal School of Ministry. It's a, it's a one-year program. It's 18 to 20, 20 what? 23. What if you're 23 and a half? <laughs> it's an amazing school of ministry and i've been coming here for three years uh being able to come here for a week and, and pour into the students about evangelism and and uh, the gifts of the spirit and and just uh in ministry but it, this would be an awesome program for you guys to come out take one year get discipled and see what god wants to do in your life and for some weird crazy reason you don't go into ministry and you say well i'm not going to go into full-time ministry life is ministry so you will apply these lessons to wherever you're at if you're an attorney if you're a doctor if you're a teacher that is ministry because god will use you in that place so come out one year find out what god wants to do in your life i just think it's an amazing thing for for people to be a part of and it's not super outrageously expensive either and you're in florida you're in florida here in paradise so come on down all right guys let's uh what do you guys want to talk about tonight i think we were talking about evangelism right relational evangelism there's different kinds of evangelism right so i'm just going to throw it out there like this there's the shock and blast evangelism, like when you're going duck hunting, right? It's like to a sea of people and those BBs coming out of the shotgun, they're seeds because the Bible talks about, you know, we're, we're throwing out seeds. We're like farmers. So the shock and blast, when we go out to like a, an arena, um, a, a skate park, I guess skate park's a little bit smaller, but like um, a concert, a, a school assembly is a shock and blast. Then you have... Uh, what I would call sniper mode. And we, you probably have different names for these things. Sniper mode is one-on-one. -on -one. And when you look at a sniper and you've seen those movies, they go out, they plant themselves in these areas and they're crawling around, they're sleeping out there and they're trying to get close to the target to engage and they got one shot. And that's how it happens with relationships sometimes too, is you're there and you're going to different areas with one person and you're spending a lot of time with this one person engaging because the sniper is engaging with them. They're getting close to them. But then there's that time when God by the Holy Spirit says, okay, lay it down, give them the gospel. Or you might have a little bit more, co some conversations happening, but it's that one time when the, the gospel is given at the right time and that person gives their life to Christ. Yeah. Can you guys think of any other ways? To yeah, I know there's a lot. There's a lot that goes into it. Um, the, the that sniper mode is the majority of our lives for sure. Mm. That you know we might do a lot of work for shotgun blast stuff with special events, but yeah. a lot of our life is is very important to figure out how can we be on the sniper mode. How can I be intentional about the time I spend with other people, particularly non Christians and work? Yeah and family, the same coffee shop that I go to every day, mm -hmm. um, and then watching the Holy Spirit through relationships, that relational mm -hmm. aspect, um, give those opportunities to like show them the love of Jesus. And I think there's a lot that we can talk about. I think a lot of examples from our lives we can bring up in the show to kind of give some perspective for people to hear different stories that give different thoughts on like, how do I interact with this type of person or that type of person? And how do I go about the conversations? Mm -hmm. And having Mike here in the show today mm -hmm. is perfect because his ministry at Restore mm -hmm. is foundationally based on totally. sniper mode. That's yeah. what he does. Yep. And that's that's what builds the the regular, mm -hmm. like the whole, uh, the whole base of mm -hmm. Restore Escape Ministry mm -hmm. is, it's like an evangelistic ministry mm -hmm. But the majority of what he's doing is daily, regular basis, relational, taking the time, walking through things and letting those opportunities come. And once they come, then the Holy Spirit works and people start getting well, saved. Well, speaking of that, Mike, give us like an update from the last time you were on the show, kind of telling the testimony how this all started. It's been a year now. What's What's been cracking? Um, yeah, well, so 2024, um, I walked away from the workforce uh, mm -hmm. and doing this full time. And mm -hmm. God's called me into it so much confirmation that this is what I'm supposed to do. Um, so we're stepping out, my wife and I, 
the family, we're going to do this, uh, no longer going to be a part-time night thing. Mm -hmm. You know, it's going to be our, our whole lives. And it's really, it's that relationship, Mm -hmm. you know, that's, I've been meeting with people, maybe going to get coffee or going to get lunch or going to the skate park and, and hanging out for a couple hours and just being able to talk to them about, about their life and talk to them about, about Jesus when the opportunity is there. That's what the, the sniper or like a ninja, right? You're like, you get close and you're talking to people and living it out and caring about their lives and them experiencing what the love of the Lord looks like in Mm -hmm. someone's life, right? Mm -hmm. Instead of just, like you said, the shotgun blast. In your area, well, first of all, stepping out in faith and you're a grown man, you got kids, uh, married, um, you know, there's bills. Yeah. And for you to step out from your career to go into ministry, that first of all, that is huge. It's like, yeah. you know, the listeners might be hearing and say, oh, okay, so he's doing it full time. No, that's gnarly. You're, not, you're, not, you're no kid. You know what I mean? Right. I mean, this no. is a gnarly move to take such a risk like this of, of faith, right? But God confirmed and you went out. And the other thing, too, is it's important because a lot of people don't understand because maybe they're not educated in the in that whole skateboard community. But what we know is that there's a lot of uh, brokenness that comes to the skate park. You know, uh, to be a skateboarder, it's not like a team sport. You don't have to like pay money to get the jersey and, and show up to practice and stuff. Skateboarding is in your local park. You can get a board, you know, uh, hand me down or whatever, and you could just get into the community and skate. And what you've learned is there's all there's 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 it's not just all broken, but when you get there and you start talking to people, there is a lot of of kids are there because they don't want to be at home. Right. because of what's happening in their home mm-hmm. or maybe there's a, a, a no father which we know that's a common thing in America you know it's it's I know California was like 50% of 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 homes uh, come from broken homes no no father and I'm sure it goes all the way across the United States with what's happening now but um and they may never these people may never go to church mm-hmm. right? right but here you are in this place and able to build a relationship and let them know about God. So it is, it's, it's crucial, this place. Yeah. And it's a perfect thing to talk about because uh, it's important for listeners to understand whether or not you're a Christian Mm -hmm. and you're a part of a church. Mm -hmm. If you're not a Christian, you know, what we could talk about today can help understand like the heart of Jesus and the way that Jesus goes about evangelizing through his life, that it's not just shotgun things. Those are a lot more rare. The majority is this relational thing. So like, how did he do it and how can we do it? Mm -hmm. Uh, It's important for non-Christians to understand that that's the real heart of Christianity and Jesus, but especially now Christians, we have an expectation. So those that are listening that are a part of the church, there's a huge challenge and a lot of times not well done mm. on how to be relationally evangelistic mm. with your life in the normal parts of your life, in the workplace, in the coffee shops, and it's of your family and stuff like that. And um, and that can be a huge encouragement to, to talk about like, man, what does this really look like? You know, because I don't have to and I shouldn't just go and shove Jesus down people's throats. Mm-hmm. But like, really, how do I do that? How do I set up that sniper shot? Because I want to I want to identify it because there's two. There's there's one where if you're interested in evangelism, you can go to a church and they can give you an evangelism class mm-hmm. to go and evangelize in the street. Okay, that's that's one type. But you're talking about relational. Yeah. Da- with, your, with your neighbors. Right. Your friends. Right. Uh, people that you're going to be around a lot. So you can't, you can't come off weird and they have to see something in your life that's real that and hear about Christ in the right way so that they're attracted to it. It's not like a weird thing where you're just trying to close a deal. Yeah. You know, yeah. I look at it as um, you had said the thing about the scattering seed, right? The yeah. parable of the, the farmer scattering yeah. the seed. And the first one, he says, it falls on the, on the path, mm-hmm. right? And the birds come and eat the seed. Mm-hmm. And a, the enemy comes and steals the word from people, mm-hmm. right? And I believe that relational relational evangelism is that concrete path underneath it there's soil Mm -hmm. and i feel like that the love of jesus is like the sledgehammer that we bring Mm -hmm. as you're loving on people and getting to know them Mm -hmm. that you're just whacking that path until it cracks right until it starts to break up right and then all of that becomes now we've got now we've got some soil we can Mm -hmm. see but here now we gotta rake through that broken concrete Mm -hmm. and and until you can till it that's so that's the question is how do you do that 
in a way that you're not being this weird Christian, like punch someone in the face because you are, you are going to rough ground that has good soil and you're using love to really break it down. But then in our minds, you know, we become Christians, we can automatically think, okay, well that means I need to actually kind of be like a sledgehammer, but it's right. not necessarily true. Like the right. way to be a sledgehammer with love, you it's gotta different. be into Right, so yeah, how do you so, do that? So to be that, the, the sledgehammer of love, it's just loving people, right? Yeah. Like, Someone coined this phrase a long time ago, right? They're, they don't care what you know until they know that you care. <laughs> right, right, good one. So it's like, yeah. we can go out and throw out all of our spiritual knowledge and all of our scriptures that we memorize, but it's the Holy Spirit that is the evangelist. Not mm -hmm. me, not you, none of right. us. Right. right. He's the evangelist. So it's that spending time with the Lord, the fruit of the Spirit one of them is, is patience, endurance, long-suffering. Mm -hmm. And it takes that. Yeah. It takes that. It takes gentleness. Mm -hmm. To go to the skate park and skate with people, and you may not have a conversation about Jesus. Mm -hmm. that, if, you're letting, if you're being led by the Holy Spirit and that conversation happens, then that's a fruitful conversation. Right. Unfortunately, we end, up, we end up with this pressure from other Christians like, oh, what is your ministry? I, I, I dealt with this when I started. Right. Hmm. How many, how many times? Oh, so you preach the gospel every single time? Yeah. Yeah. In a way, yeah. no. I don't stand on a bench and tell them yeah. every single time I'm there every Tuesday night at the same skate park. Totally. It's the same kids. I know what you're I, saying. <laughs> yeah. I talk to them about their life. Yeah. What's their, what's, yeah. how are you doing in school? What's your family life like? Mm -hmm. And start to build a relationship and, the more that you care about them, the more their eyes are getting opened. Like, why? Why does this person love me? Yeah, no one right. else cares about me. Right. And those doors open by the Holy Spirit yeah. to have conversations. And then all of a sudden, people are hitting you up. That's, it, it's, oh, that's how it's always been for me. Yeah. Random DMs on Instagram. Hey, I need, can you talk? Mm -hmm. Can you give me a call? Then all of a sudden we're having a conversation about real life, right? We're not talking about something videos. or whatever. Can you pray for right. me? And that door is being opened by the Holy Spirit, not me. Mm -hmm. I'm not qualified to do this at all. I didn't even know how to skate. I just showed up at a skate park yeah. like a kook in full pads. But you could, because you love them though. Right. Yeah. Right. And then it was like, you just take those steps of getting to know people. I mean, there's relationships I have with people that I haven't, I haven't shared the gospel with them. They just know, oh, Mike's different. Yeah. Mike's a minister, yeah. you know? Yeah. So, and I talk to them about their life. I talk mm -hmm. to them about their, their marriages, their kids, their parents, whoever, however, you know, however old they are, mm -hmm. talk about life. And then we just get this relationship that's, that's being built. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden the doors open. It makes me think issues. of uh, another, another phrase somebody coined, preach the gospel and if necessary, use words, that kind of yeah. mentality, yeah. same yeah. kind of thing. They have to know something's different about you. You know, we know that story about, about John the Baptist, like he was a straight path of Jesus, right? The way he conducted himself, the way he acted, the way he carried himself. And then I'm sure, obviously, when he's talking, you know his message, but um, it's, it's our life. When people know there's something different about them, which starts conversations. You've, you, there's, there's a, if someone was saying, I, I mean, I remember being in a room or something like, oh, well, you don't cuss. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. you're not cussing. Like, 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 you know, backstage, everyone's cussing, right? Um, you're not, what, what, what's up with that? Or you don't drink. Or like, what, you know, what's the deal? And they start asking questions. about. that's the common thing with me. What, why you don't drink? What, what, why don't you don't, you know, we're in a, this atmosphere of this concert, whatever, you don't, you don't drink, why? And then that opens up conversations. And then the relationship starts from there. Yeah, I had a girl in high school that was just in my Spanish class and uh, I knew her for the whole year. And then at some point near the end of the year, she randomly said, Jairus, why are you so happy all the time? Right. And I was like, oh, that's the opportunity. Yeah. But I like it took yeah. it took just, you know, being my own relationship with Jesus and just being a normal high school student mm -hmm. and letting his kind of love go through my life without me having to because everybody at school knew I was a Christian. Mm -hmm. They figured it out and word spread. So they know what's up. So then eventually, you know, mm -hmm. someone asks that question. And it makes sense when. And it's easier to say it's hard to do, which is why it's important to talk about. But it makes sense when you think, oh, it is love that opens that door mm -hmm. because for God so loved the world mm -hmm. that he sent his only son. That's how he saved us is through love. But uh, it's just like it's, it's an easy cliche thing to say, but a hard thing to actually do 
that I'm not going to use my knowledge, which puffs up, mm-hmm. but my love, which builds up, and, and not just to love in, in word or, or uh, in word, but in action and in truth. Another verse, um, we, we naturally think as a Christian, like, I have to tell you information. I have right. to control your heart. Like you were saying, like, I, I, I got to be Jesus and save you. I got to be the Holy Spirit and mm-hmm. help you. I got to be God the Father and control you. Yeah. And it comes from good motive, but then so easily from that, like, ah, like, I want you to be saved, so I got to do something about it. You get, you lose the love and you start thinking about the logistics instead of the person. Right. And then it shuts off so many of those opportunities. It shuts it's, off relationships. It's like that close the, the, close the deal mentality. It's like, I got to close the deal. I got to lead him to the Lord. But is that what the Holy Spirit is actually leading you to do? Or are you just supposed to throw some seeds in there? And another guy's going to throw some more seeds and more seeds. And then all of a sudden, yeah. God's going to water it a year later or two years later. There was this there was this uh, doctor, is an acupuncture doctor in, in Orange County, Dr. Kevin. He's a, he's a Christian. And uh, previous to that, he was going to my dad's church for six years. Six years. My dad's an advantage. People get saved. Like, you know like crazy in my dad's search with him mm-hmm. and my dad. This guy was going here, my dad studies for six years. And then finally all these seeds, and then finally one day after six years, he gave his life to Christ. Wow. But sometimes it takes, you know, and, and that's going to my dad's church with an evangelist. Yeah. Imagine just having a conversation at the skate park or your neighbors that you're seeing yeah. every once in a while when you're coming home from work or taking out the trash or whatever. It could take time, like don't rush it. It's, and, but when it's time with the Holy Spirit, he's going to give you the green light and you know that's why we have to be alert and aware of what the Holy Spirit is doing in everyone's individual life. Yeah. You know, sometimes God has to take people, you know, there's a couple people right now that, that are, I guess, in my life in a sense of where just but one bad mistake after another and you're just like, dude, like, okay, like at this point, even when I was a knucklehead to the, to the max, I'm like, okay, at this point, I would have been giving my life to Jesus. Right. Like, but it's just again and again, another thing, another thing, these, it, these situations that keep happening, but, and, and, and they know what you're about. Right. They know what I'm about. Clearly, they know what I'm about, but they're not, they're not making that, uh, they're not giving their life to Christ yet because they're just not there yet, I guess, Which at is, rock bottom. Yeah. That's very helpful perspective. Mm-hmm. You could probably speak into this a lot too, that um, to help the Christians out, like, you know, how can we be good at relational evangelism? How can we be good at not jumping the gun on things mm-hmm. um, and having patience? And that perspective you're bringing up starts to kind of get into that, like helping me think through how can I be patient like you were bringing up long suffering and not jump the gun too much and actually show you love. And you, you have to remember that the scripture says, you know, when we receive Jesus, we receive the spirit. He gives us spiritual sight. If you don't have that, you don't have spiritual sight. So you remember any non-Christian I'm interacting with, I'm remembering you don't see spiritually clearly because you haven't received Jesus. So that doesn't make me cooler than you. That gives me perspective to slow down. All right, I don't got to trip out. Like when you keep on making mistakes that I know are going to keep hurting you and you're not going to Jesus yet, that helps me to be like, all right, like you don't see it. You know, I'm waiting for you to give your life to Jesus and see it, but you don't see it yet. And also remembering even hearing you talk, like I remember that I came from that, you know, I got my past and I remember that I didn't get it and I was making dumb mistakes. And then Jesus saved me and I didn't deserve it. This is an amazing thing. And, and again, it continues to give you that perspective and that patience on how to lovingly take the time, yeah. love them instead of trying to fix them. You know what I mean? That's the problem yeah. though, because we, all of us can get impatient. Yeah. Be like, dude, what? Like seriously. But then, like you just said, look back at our lives. Mm-hmm. Like, look how long yeah. God waited for us to make one mistake after just years and years and years. Right. So we have and to. And still g- does. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, we have to give him that He's space. still helping us out like the, every day. There was um, one of my good friends that I grew up with, um, Brian. I'll talk to him. I'll talk about him on the show right now because he he, uh, he came to our church. We we all party together and we're all like good friends. Like he was like my cousin's little, uh, my younger cousin's friend, a couple years younger. But I hung out with all them as well. So we're all like we're all like brothers and fight fight fought and party together and the whole thing and done you know travel around but uh he got saved uh, years ago and god was doing something in his life but for whatever reason it's those seeds you know just i think the the terrors and the weeds kind of grew you know choked out the mm-hmm. the work of the holy spirit in his life and he went back to his 
his life or whatever. And, and we've always just loved him, you know, because we're all friends. We're brothers, you know. And um, we never, like, came down on him or whatever and just like, all right, God, you got him. And then recently uh, he ended up coming back to the church uh, this last Sunday, actually. And he rolled up, and it's my, that's like my brother, you know what I mean? It's like, gave him a hug, hung out with him for a little bit. He went in and, and just rededicated his life back to God, and now God's yeah. doing something. But it's that grace of like, but there was years. There was literally years in between this. Yes, you know what dude. I mean? The Holy yeah. Spirit will continue to chase him down. And I didn't get him. I, I, was, I, I was just like, man, dang it. He, he walked away like that stinks, you know, because God was doing something. But you have to, like, let him. Sometimes you got to let people do their thing. God's got right, them. Right. And then in that time, God will bring them back. But you never stop loving and being available. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? We were still like, yeah. on, and that's on, hard to do. we're still on Instagram, right. like back and forth. Like, we're tech, we're, well, actually, we have this big group text with all of our friends sending funny videos. But the, the relationship's always there. But I never was like, never coming down to haunt them. Like, hey, dude, like, what's up? Like, he knows yeah. what I'm about. I, he knows he got saved at one point, you know. So, um, but just continue to keep that door open. Yeah, that, that's is, part of it is keeping the door open and not giving up because God didn't give up hope on us. Yeah, and that's a confusing thing because you can, you can feel the pain and yeah. the annoyance yeah. and the frustration of like, man, come on, like, yeah. Yeah. you know, I I know the truth, like I know this is better for you, and yes. I think it's important to acknowledge that that's okay. You know, like imagine the pain that God feels for us, the pain that Jesus yeah. felt for us and feels for us. It's okay to have that frustration. It's okay to have that that anger, you know, the righteous anger of like, man, this is just not what it's supposed to be. But like you're saying, not not cutting yourself off from that because you're so frustrated with it. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think that God gives, um, you know, He says gifts to the church, right? Mm -hmm. He gives apostles, He gives evangelists, He gives teachers, pastors. And I think some people He gives a burden for the lost mm -hmm. in the heart where it really affects you. Yeah. And I think that we can sometimes get overwhelmed by that. And we think of stuff like walking in the flesh as walking in sin, but sometimes the flesh is disguised as our good works as a Christian. And I'm, I'm just trying to get somebody saved. And I've had this conversation with, with a friend of mine that so badly wants to see somebody saved, you know? And, and it's like, well, let me just, give you all these logical arguments of why yeah. you should trust in the Lord. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I had a conversation with him and said, you know, if we can talk somebody into Jesus, somebody can talk them out of Jesus. Right? True. It's the experience yeah. of Jesus yeah. in our lives yeah. that, that radically changes someone to where they're like, I'm not giving this up. Yeah. 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 And that's what yeah. we're praying for. Yeah. And we're praying that we would be an empty vessel that God can use for that encounter, mm -hmm. however that looks, right? Mm -hmm. And it's like, and I, I would love to say to, to, to Christians that don't feel this pressure that you're the one doing any of the saving, right? Mm -hmm. right. We get caught up in that. Easy yeah. to, yeah. I'm not saving anybody. Right. Right, I'm a knucklehead Which that's brings the weight up of that. Skip. Yeah, it's like, I'm just trying to be obedient and available, and if the Lord uses me in that day, and that is the day of salvation for yeah. someone, yeah. then praise God, and it's awesome, and right. you're part of it, and you celebrate it, and it puts a fire in you to keep going, right? Yeah. But I'm not saving anybody. Mm -hmm. So I don't have to have this burden of like, what did I do to get someone saved today? Mm -hmm. Our job is to cling to the Lord, right? To spend time with the Lord in the morning mm -hmm. and at night, and, and just build our relationship with Him so that we can hear and be prompted by the Holy Spirit when it's yeah. go time. Yeah. When it's time to, to say what we need to say and to do what we're supposed to do, and God has set up those dominoes that are gonna mm -hmm. fall in someone's life mm -hmm. and they're gonna get saved. Yeah. So it's like, don't feel pressure because of other ministries or other people's lives or right. it's just, we run the race that's set before us. I just heard Francis Chan right. talk about this, right? Yeah. There's a race set before me, before you, before you. They're all different. Mm -hmm. And we got to run our race and not each other's races. Mm -hmm. And we got to just, it says, run the race set before you. Keep your eyes on the author and perfecter of faith. He's the one that's authoring all of our faith. Yeah, it's, uh, I think, uh, 1 Corinthians that, that says, you know, uh, Paul said, I watered. He, you know, I planted, yeah. he watered, but yeah. God makes it grow. God's and and that's, if you, if you continue to feed yourself with that 
um, yeah. expectation is, is a yep. good word for what you're talking about. And there's no pressure. Exactly. Because yeah. if you have the expectation mm-hmm. on you being Jesus and being the salvation for people, instead of just, I'll be faithful and whatever happens, happens, and I'm yeah. going to be, th- then your standard is, I'll have a clear conscience when I lay my head on the pillow at night that I've been faithful in my walk with Jesus, regardless of what happens with other people. If it's not that, you will fall into this weight of being the Savior yourself, and therefore you'll be thinking, I'm only going to feel okay about my relationship with Jesus if this person or this many people have been saved or are actually legit or following Jesus or taking it as seriously as I think they should. The priority first is that personal relationship with Jesus, and it it sets your expectation for being evangelistic with other people properly so that you don't you don't go to bed like that, you know, yeah. thinking like, geez, man, I, I didn't do a good job because so-and-so didn't get saved. It gets back to, uh, it's back to what you were saying earlier that like you might, you might have this thought that I'm gonna, I remember, dude, I was in high school and uh, I was on the, walking on the track for PE class and we had two walks around the track and we started this walk and this kid is next to me and we started talking about stuff and then he started talking about God. It was like a random God moment, atheist kind of stuff and, I had this whole plan in my head. I was walking through like creation and God in general. And I was like, eventually I'm gonna get to the gospel and I'm just gonna give it to him. And I'm gonna ask him if he wants to receive. I had this whole plan. Yeah. But before I got there, we finished the second lap uh-huh. and it went in and I was so distraught. Yeah. I was so like, what the heck? But it was that lesson you mentioned. Actually, an evangelist, my friend, shout out to Jason White. Um, I walked into church and he was the one that told me like, Hey man, sometimes you just like a puzzle piece. Like sometimes you yeah, just, yeah. it's just a puzzle. part, yep. it's a part of the puzzle. Like and that. then it gets to that standard of, Oh, yeah. that's all I was supposed to be. I watered or I planted. It's not that like I take the weight of, I had to get to that. My expectation was mm. the one that was jacked up. I did the right thing. And mm. if God wants me to play a certain part, I'll play a certain part and be stoked about it. You know? Yeah. And that's the thing is you have to be careful, like learn how to handle that. Cause like, I know that sometimes if I don't, if I'm like around, Obviously, I'm an evangelist, so I'm like, it's just naturally like, yeah, like, I want to see these guys get saved, but then sometimes God's just like, just say, you know, you just say certain things, and you're like, all right, yeah, that's it, and you have to be okay with that. Yeah. Yep. You know what I mean? Then there, it's just the pressure. You take the pressure off. Which, again, is yeah. not easy, and that's okay to to acknowledge. Like, Absolutely. It's not easy, and you know? I love how both, and, and like, there's not a wrong way, right? Some people can do the shotgun. Yeah. You come to town and we do an event. Yeah, shotgun. shotgun. You're gonna do a shotgun. Yeah. But then Jairus and I mm-hmm. are at the park. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Snag- and, yeah. And and we're gonna yeah. we're gonna try to water those seeds uh-huh. that were right. planted. Mm-hmm. And then we're gonna try to build relationship. Mm-hmm. And then maybe the next time you come around, that person's looking forward to. Oh, Ryan, I, I remember that guy. Right. Mm-hmm. I want to go. I want to go to the event. Some plant, some you know? water. Yeah. Or they, yeah. you know, we give them yeah. the book. And yeah. I use your book. And an NLT Bible. Those are my two yeah. go-tos. Let me give you this and I'm give you this. I'm going to stalk you up. Shout out to the book. I need to send you some more. Shout out to the book. Yeah. I, need, I need to send some Kill more. It's called Kill, Kill the, noise. the Noise, Finding Meaning Above the Madness. No, but it's, it's uh, I, I was saying that the other day. I go, I don't mind pushing my book because it's it's his story. Right. It's God's story. It's a discipleship book. Right. And with practical yeah. life application to uh, to help people in their walk and to get on fire for God and to find God. You know, it's 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 all it's all different Um a lot of different uh, aspects to it but we're going to be going to a break here in a minute but i do want to plug um restore skate here out of florida where can people look you up and find to donate to you and and maybe uh have you do some events with them where do they go yeah um so restoreskate.com mm-hmm. um there's a donation page sweet that people can give to and um also on instagram restore skate absolutely and, uh, yeah we appreciate it man we got Big vision for the future. Yep. A lot of things. We we had a lot of plans. And, and I'll clarify so. that Restore Skate is a local ministry that's supported by the local church here yep. Yep. that we're doing the same awesome. piece. They're, yeah, they're on our that. list. That's for what's that. up. Yeah. So yeah. they're they're and, the real deal. They're doing it. All right. Mike's doing and, the real thing. There could thing. be more outside donors too to help fund. It takes a lot yes. to uh, a lot of resources to give up. Bibles are expensive. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? I'm providing yeah. the books for free, but yeah, the Bibles and all that are expensive. And then uh, Zeal School Ministry. Zeal, yeah, it? zealschool.com. We're yep. taking in applications for class four, now starts back, in the fall back, of 2024. To the Ryan Maximum Reed students. It's a year long. 18 to 23. 23. Get there. 23 and a half. Right now Good we luck. got 10 students here that we're teaching. So, yeah. Right? Awesome. All right. So uh, go, don't forget to go to the whosoever's and uh, we'll be back in two minutes. Peace. More of the Ryan Reese Show coming up. Post your questions at Ryan Reese on his Instagram, Twitter, and or Facebook. 
now back, back, back to the Ryan Reese show. All right, we are back. The first half was epic talking about relational evangelism. Now we're going to go into like practical life application. I have Jairus Hodge from Calvary Chapel Fellowship here in St. Pete, Florida, and Mike Francisco from Restore Skate. All right, let's get into it. You guys got some stories about practical life application um, evangelism. Yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. There's a lot. Um, the first examples that I think of are in my own life. I have uh, friends outside of church. I have family outside of church. And I have uh, like regular life things that I do. Um, I got people at my gym that I go to every day. And I got people at coffee shops that I go to all the time. So like first example would be like there's a coffee shop I go to with my wife multiple times a week. Um, I intentionally go to that same coffee shop for the sake of relational evangelism. Right. So I'll go there with, um, so my work happens to be church, but I'll take work meetings there. If I'm taking the students out to talk with them about something, or I'm taking the, the men out to mm-hmm. talk about something, we will go out so we can be in the city and just be present in the city, right. which is a good way to start. It's a one way to, to be relationally evangelistic is just be in the city. Mm-hmm. Don't be stuck in the bubble of the church. Don't be stuck in the bubble of just your house. Mm-hmm. But if there's anything you can do at parks or coffee shops or restaurants that you can start being consistent with and kind of repetitive about, um, that gives you opportunity. So just the other day, I went to this coffee shop and I walked up to the front counter and the guy at the front counter said, hey, Jairus. And that totally tripped me out because I've been going there for like heavily for like the last year and I've been trying to learn their names. And they said, hey, with my name. And for me, that was like, I knew in my my spirit mindset, I was like, that's sick. And then once he said, hey, Jairus, the girl making the coffee next was like, Jairus. And the guy behind him was like, Jairus. So I just, and I think I had like the guys or the students with me. So I pointed out like, yo, like that's a year of work. A year of work. That I've done at this coffee shop that Mm -hmm. has built my relationship with these people. And they all know what I do. They all know I'm a pastor. And they know that when I come in, most of the time I'm coming with like my church homies and a lot of the other church homies go there. That's amazing. So it's like, but it's, it takes time of me. I haven't talked with any of them about Jesus. I've just been relational with them. I've just asked their names. I've tried to learn their names so I know their names. I learn things about their life. I ask small questions. Every time I go, tiny little things. Um, Last week uh, at the same shop, a guy was there. I learned his name. I've talked about his tattoos with him and he was wearing a jacket. And I was like, man, that's a cool jacket. And then I went there yesterday and I wore, I was going to wear a jacket that was similar to his. And so when I saw him, I, I just said, hey man, I was thinking about you this morning because I almost was gonna wear a jacket that's like that, but it was too thick, whatever. It's yeah. so like stupid little things, yeah, yeah. but that that 10 second conversation built so much collateral relationally mm. that now it's like every time I'm there, now they know my name, now that we say what's up and they know what I'm about. And so in time with this particular example, I'm waiting for that snipe shot. I'm waiting for someone to be like, like, yo, can you pray for something? Or I can tell them, hey, like we're doing an Easter service. Can you come over? Or, yeah, yeah. Hey, I'm doing a Christmas service. Can you come Just over? Just invite. You, know what I'm saying? you never know. Yep. Yeah. You never know. That's amazing. What about you, Mike? Yeah. So um, I think of a couple things, you know, just always being at the park, being, being consistent. So like these people see you all the time at this coffee shop. They get to know you. Right. And the key to being relational, to doing relational evangelism is, is being there. There has to be a consistency yeah. for people to get to know you. Right. You know, I think of a, a skateboarder that it was a couple of years of going to the park. You know, we'd bless the food. We'd talk with everybody about life. We're doing, we're doing life with these guys one night a week, but we're doing life with them. Mm-hmm. And um, as simple as just even following each other on Instagram and liking a post and telling them, oh, that clip was fire or right. whatever. Yeah. And then one day we... You know, we get a rain out, so we go to a we go to get pizza, and this guy and two of his friends, they're like, "Oh, you know, we'll we'll go, we'll go have pizza with you guys." And yeah. I thought that that alone was cool. Like, yeah. oh, they want to go have pizza with us. Yeah. We're not skating. Yeah. We're not okay. Just so hand. let's go. Right. So then the one guy's like, "I'll say grace." I thought that was pretty cool. <laughs> Heck yeah! A couple of years later, when we started the skate church, he's coming. That's and awesome. And then eventually, he gets saved. We baptize him. And, you know, he's, he's working, uh, his friend and one of the other guys, we baptized him, he got saved. And it was like, just the, just the relationship of, of being a skateboarder 
and supporting other skateboarders, right? Like that, that was right. it. It was, it was that simple. And then always being there and talking about life with them and worrying like, what's the relationship with your dad? What are you doing for work? How's that work? And how's that going? Exactly. And then just caring about their everyday life mm-hmm. in and out and, and opening up doors to speak with them about salvation about christ about the cross right. which will and, come which will come yeah it just comes. somehow it's right. just continually pouring out and loving on people and not it, it really is that simple it's I, that simple there's a as i hear you talk there's a yeah. really good practical way that that i think we can say it that would be really helpful if you're trying to figure out like okay how do i think about this how do i be practically relationally evangelistic but be normal Right. Like that's the that's the ticket. How do I just yeah. be a normal human? First of all, understand that's what it is. You don't have to you don't have to be a Christian. You be a normal human as a Christian. Like if that makes sense mm-hmm. to them, you're just another homie. You're just a yeah. normal human. You don't that's go in it. there and say, "Hey, I'm a Christian." Well, so let you know. Like you just go yeah. to the coffee shop, and then in time, eventually, yeah. you know, they find out what you're all about, or you talk to them, and that becomes collateral. But you have to to a non Christian, you have to think, "I'm just another normal human being." Yeah. And as I hear you talk, I think a good way that it can encourage how do I do that? How do I look like a normal human being and not try and be like weird and, and extra to a non Christian? And a good way to do that is practically caring about the practical things of their life. You said yep. it. Mm-hmm. Show yeah. affection for the practical things in their life. Yep. And you think about those normal life practical things and that's what you start asking questions about and that's what you start praying about behind the scenes. You know, yeah. eventually three months go by and you can say, hey, I've been praying for that. How's it going? You know, like yep. coffee shop, like, hey, like how's your daughter? One of the things organizationally, right, for Restore, one of the things that my heart is, there's kids that are suffering with mental illness, mm-hmm addictions, Mm -hmm. um, they got broken homes, they got all these things going on in their lives, is like providing practical tools, right? Not, it's not just, hey, I'm here just to get you to to say my prayer. Say, exactly, say that prayer and then everything's gonna be fine, no. Yeah, that's starting. Part of it is like, he's, the Lord's command was go out and make disciples of all nations, not go out and get people to say this prayer so they can have a name tag that says, Christian on it, yes, right. Because that and means in a nothing. subtitle that said there's Mike's the one that, that did it, or yeah, Jairus is the one that did it. There's people that think they're Christians because they live in America. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean. Yeah, like yeah. following Jesus, so that is a walking daily, right? Like Jesus did with all of his guys. Mm-hmm. They didn't know what they were doing. Yep. He didn't have qualified people. Yeah, you know, I love one of your shirts that says "Filthy Fishermen." Yeah, these guys were not. They weren't like the the brightest bulbs in the lamp shop. These guys were just regular dudes that had problems and Jesus walked through life with them. And like, we have to care about if you just want someone to say a prayer, you're one of those people that just posts things because you want the thumbs up from your Christian buddies on your social media. So true. What you think? You're not thinking about them. You're thinking about yourself. That doesn't, that doesn't entice me at all. Right. Like I've said to people, well, restore is not for Christians. And they look at me like, what it is. Yeah. I want to. I want to disciple people. I want to teach them how to walk. Yeah. But we're looking for the law. Like I it's have not a, heart. a Christian club. I come join right. the Christian club. Right. Exactly. Right. And come say all your one liners and do all if, that. Yeah. Yeah. If you don't care about someone's mental health, if you don't want to give them tools, if you don't want to point them in the direction of an organization that's that's doing mental health, yeah. mm-hmm. and you don't care health. about those things about their lives. Yeah then you don't really love them yeah. and you're not really being led by this. In my opinion, you're not being led by the spirit. That's, that's practical me. perspective that a lot of Christians, I think, struggle with. To understand that showing Jesus to someone, I mean, this is so important, dude. Showing Jesus to someone very often can and may and will look like practically helping mm-hmm. someone right. in a way that doesn't have Christianity stamped onto it. Yeah. It might even be secular by definition. It's, it's not like a Christian organization you give to them. You might not give them like a Bible to read right away, but you're focused on them. What can I yeah. do to show love to you? And the reason it gets lost is because if it doesn't have a Christian stamp on it, then Christians get sketched out. Yeah. But we, Christians have to remember anything that actually helps someone become a better human is rooted in truth and therefore rooted in God. So if it's not like satanic or demonic or heretical or stupid, Mm. anything that you can do to help that person, and a lot of relational evangelism includes this of like, Mm. 
Like I will do anything I can. I'll, I'll get, you know, mental health stuff is a good example. This organization, um, the LGBTQ community is a huge example of this because you can only think it's only black and white. Like we're either going to talk about Jesus or we're not. It's like, well, hold on. Let's just talk about relationships in general, which is a godly thing. Let's yeah. just talk about love in general, which is a godly thing. Let me try and utilize godly characteristics in regular th- practical conversations and try and help yeah. you understand like, Hey, I care about you. And I'm going to try and like, we're going to walk through this and talk. Like if you are cutting yourself, yep. let's talk about why that's bad. Yeah. Let's you talk think, about why you do that. You know, people think it ends with just giving their life to Jesus, but you gotta think where these people are coming from to get them to that place. Mm-hmm. Right? How now? Okay, I gave my life to Christ, but now what? What does it look like for me to get my life on track? Yeah. Like someone that's dealing with drugs, right? Right. Yeah. Most people aren't like myself. There's been a few people that get saved and the drugs just stopped. A lot of people get saved and they battle. Yeah. They still battle yeah. back and forth, you know, going, you know, I remember Jay Adams, he gave his life to Christ and he was back and forth. And there's just different people that, that not in his later years, but there was a battle at that time. And I have many friends that have given their life to Christ and all of a sudden they relapse on heroin or, you know what I mean? But you have to get those practical things. If it's not faith based, you can still send them to a rehab to get to help, you know, for sure. Get, it's, it, there is, there is more to it. It's not, and that's where the relational part comes in. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, there's a, there's a restaurant I go to um, by my house, and it's 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 owned by two like married gay guys, and it's a, a bomb Mexican restaurant or a, a breakfast place. So I go there, and I've been just just showing up. And first, you know, they're like, "Oh, where are you from?" You know, and I'm hanging out with them. I don't really say much. I'm just kind of going there, bringing my family, and then more conversations uh, opened up. But the owner's like. He's like, yeah, so what do you do? And then I told him, like, oh, we do have a nonprofit. And we tour around schools and, you know, help people that are dealing with the mental health crisis. And I said, you know, we, I go, I had an encounter with God. So, I, you know, it's 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 faith-based where I let him know about, about Christ. And he's like, oh, that's cool. He's like, I used to uh, uh, be a part of the um, Go to Vans Warp Tour with um, uh, To Love Right on Their Arms. Because I guess he was like, yeah. so that clearly yeah. says he was suicidal and cutting or something, right? right. So then... A little bit more uh, conversations that happen, and, and the, you know, I started tagging them on Instagram, posting their shop, and then they they're looking at my stuff, so they realize that you know I'm a Christian, and and they just they were cool with me. And then next thing you know, I was like, hey, dude, can I give you guys my book? So I gave my book. Then they put my book up on their store. They put a skateboard, the whosoever's on in their store, and it's now you look at the menu and you got you got to identify. Uh, they'll they'll say something in the menu, and you have to identify what this piece of, piece of artwork or this book is in the shop. But here we are, these guys, and and then that lead, led to me like ministering to some of the guys who are dealing with alcohol, and it turns out like everyone in there is dealing came off speed or you know some crazy thing. But just being that light in this place and having these conversations and just encourage them. I haven't led any of them to the Lord, right? But. They're always like I'm always like saying stuff to yeah. them to encourage yeah. them. Yeah. And uh, the door's open, and now I just got a phone call. You know, one guy's dealing with like some pretty gnarly like alcohol, like his liver's like giving out. And now they're like, they, I just got a text, and they're like, you need to call him. He's reaching out. He needs help. Look at so that. It's like time. Yeah. Look at that. Hopefully, it won't ever get to that place with you that are listening. But just by me being in there and not preaching to anyone, but letting them know what we're about, I do. I'm a Christian. Here's our book, and just it gave all of them. I sent product too to the store. Hey, everyone, you know, here's some whosoever product. Yeah, just loving on them, yeah. never asking them for anything, and now you know this. Well, this not only the conversations happening. I think it's it's in Colossians, I believe, where it says the you know, um, Christ in you, the hope of glory, mm-hmm. right? Christ in us is hope. Yeah, He gives us hope. He gives us a peace, and like, there's going to be a day, regardless of their lifestyle choices. Where someone needs hope. Yeah. Exactly. Someone needs peace. Exactly. And they're going to come to you and they're going to say something. Mm-hmm. And then that's where th- the Lord starts to move in someone's someone's life. Right? We right. can't expect people to behave until they believe. Yeah. <laughs> we go for this behavior thing, right? Like, oh, like, dude, let's get people in the... Big stuff for Christians. In the, in the oh, Jesus is real. Yeah. yeah. And then see him in you. Mm-hmm. And then... He'll take care of everything, right? Like he's the one that does all the transformation. I can't do any sanctifying, no. right? I'm a teenager. I can't sanctify him. Yeah. I can't sanctify my friends. Right. I can't sanctify myself. Nope. So it's like, it's that relying on the Lord solely, right? Just surrender. He knows what he's doing. He's been evangelizing people since the beginning. Since he left earth, <laughs> right. right? Like that was it. Yeah. From Pentecost on, right. evangelism has been happening and he's done a pretty good job at it. 
It wasn't, no one came up with a great idea, but it's like, that's what we got to do. And I've, I, I'm thinking right now, like I would never say the name, but I know a skateboarder that's, that's a local. I love him. He's awesome. Great skateboarder dealing with all kinds of stuff. And him and I have had so many good, fruitful conversations mm -hmm. where I'm just like, let's talk about, let's talk about what's going on in your life. And mm -hmm. this is, this is what's happened in my life. And I'm, let me pray for you. And the door's open for prayer. Yeah, totally. I don't have to wrestle them into, into Jesus. I just got to keep loving on them and caring about mm -hmm. the aspects of his life that the Lord cares about, right? Yeah. The Lord wants, I love that our ministry is restored. The Lord wants to restore people yeah. Yeah. fully yeah. Right. to him. It's a lifelong process. Yep. So it's like, well, <coughs> let me talk to you about what's going on in your life. Let me talk to you about drugs. Let me talk to you about whatever beliefs that you're dabbling in yeah. and, and kind of go through it with them. Yeah. And like eventually the Lord's just opening up the doors. Yeah, I pray the about it. Will come. God, let it happen. Yeah. Right? He's done it before. He'll do it again. And that is, uh, it makes me think too, even in those moments, it's just a random thought. Like, like when you paint that picture of you talking to someone like that, and as a Christian, we could focus too much on those moments, but to talk about those moments, when the moment comes mm -hmm. and you have the opportunity to say something, you don't trip because the scripture says the Holy Spirit will give you what to say. Yep. Um, and that's just an encouragement for, uh, for waiting for those moments patiently and then trusting the Lord and, uh, and how do you know that the Holy Spirit's going to give it to you? It's because what we're talking about is practical love. That's, that's what continues to open the door. You said a really, really big thing um, that's huge, important for Christians to remember and remind themselves that you cannot expect a non-Christian to act upon Christian values. That is actually what mostly happens and stumbles Christians in doing a bad job of showing love to non-Christians is... We become a Christian, we learn what the Bible says is a sin, and then we look upon everyone else that has these sinful lifestyles and automatically think, oh, that's bad, you're doing this, you're bad. So I'm gonna treat you like I should actually treat the sin instead of the human. And it goes back to what we said, how do I be relational in the right way with people? You have to love them on a basic human level, right. not trip out because they're gay. And so because you're yeah. gay, I'm freaking out like, oh, I like being yeah. gay is so bad. And oh, I can't talk to you because that's so uncomfortable and homosexuality is so, that's such a sin and that's such a hot topic. And like, if you if you look at the human and just forget about that for a sec, there's so many things you can you can focus on yeah. to show them love. There's one person that I've known yeah. for a long time and it took 10 years. They're a part of the LGBTQ community. Mm -hmm. It took 10 years until I was able to drop one statement because we're very close and we're a part of a group that's very close. Mm -hmm. And they've known the whole time what I'm all about. You know, They had a partner for the whole 10 years uh, that I knew them and then them and their partner had a breakup and it was really heavy for them, which first of all, my heart hurt because I wasn't tripped out that you're gay. I'm like, I love you. You know, you, you, are, you are family to me, like you're close to me and I love you. So when they had this breakup and everybody that knew about it, it was tough. And they were kind of like, you know, isolating themselves and you just saw like it really wrecked them. I was able to, because of 10 years of not talking about it at all, because they're a very like, you know, strong personality. Yeah. If you say something, it's like, eh, yeah. sketch. No, totally. So I just be in there. It's called wisdom. Right, regular life, regular hangout. We, we can laugh about regular jokes and eat food and all this jazz. 10 years of doing that, the breakup happens in their relationship. They're isolated, they're in a room uh, by themselves watching TV when we're all hanging out one time. And I was able to go and just say, hey, my wife and I, we, we love you and we're praying for you. And he said, thank you. And I, that was like, that was the biggest deal to me yeah. that I could, I could yeah. throw some kind of Christian related, ra very real spiritual thing mm -hmm. and it be received mm -hmm. by him because like, I'm not tripping out because I really do love you. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, even since then, you know, we've gone out to dinner together and mm -hmm. just talked about life, you know, and, and, and they're not following Jesus right now but I'm still being able to do that. But it, it takes all these yeah. stories, like it's time. The relational stuff takes time. That, that's also a very important fact is like not judging people by the sin. Right. Mm -hmm. that, is a, that is a huge thing. And I think that um, 
that really trips up a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And when you look at, when, when you really go down the line and you guys have talked to many people of the stories and you could see someone and as you start talking to them and you find out the journey of how they got to this point, normally there's abuse, there's the fatherless, there's molestation. I mean, there's, there's so many things that could lead someone to drugs to porn, to be a porn star, right, yep. to be, uh, you know, part of the gay movement or to cut themselves, what, whatever, cutting. Yeah, I mean, there was a girl I talked to the other day that was cutting. She doesn't feel, feel anymore. And there's all this pain in her life. So it's like when you actually have the conversation and find out how they got there, not like, oh, you're gay or, oh, you're a drug addict or, oh, you, you're, you're a stripper or you're porn. Hold on. Let's talk about your life. Let's it, through relationship. You could kind of go start peeling the onion to find out what actually led them to that moment. And then you realize, oh, they're just broken. Just like yeah. me. Yeah, they're just broken. Right. And I have sin. And why did I, yeah. how did I get myself to this? Like, how did I get involved in so many drugs? How did I get become an alcoholic? How did I get so involved with porn? Well, yeah. I fell in love with a girl. I got married. I went through abortion. She aborted kids without telling me. I went through so much pain that I wanted to drink and numb myself. The drugs, I'd see her and I'd do a bunch of cocaine up my nose so I wouldn't feel anything. Right. You know what I mean? Like, why am I acting like that? Because of the root problem is what happened to me in my life. And then as Satan gets a grip on your life, things get more intense. The sin gets greater and greater. And then you become a total slave. Mm -hmm. And that's basically what you're seeing, what, what's going on with different people. There's a reason why people are in this situation. Yeah. So and that don't, don't judge from the outside. Yeah. Like I've been to a, my friends. They, they, we've talked about this before. They're, they're called uh, rave moms. They go to raves. And it's a bunch of moms. They don't bring any. They only have a couple guys. They'll be like a ex. They'll be like a retired cop or like an off-duty cop or a fireman or something. Mm -hmm. And those guys will be there just you know for whatever reason. But it's all moms. And they they post up right at the entrance as all these uh, ravers start coming in. You know you're talking about hundreds of thousands of of ravers and and they became a staple through personal relationships. The ravers come up, they give them a hug, whatever, and they pray with them and and all the stuff. But then you have on the other corner, there's these other guys that are like. God hates you. You're going to hell. And I've heard him on the mic literally when I was there. And, and I, cause I was there with the rave bombs and I walked down to the other block. Cause I heard that these other evangelists or whatever, or haters right. are spreading hate. And I walked down and, and they're like, look at you. You're dressed like a whore. Like, you know, your dad is real proud. And they're saying all this crazy stuff. And then one of the guys recognizes me and he's like, Ryan Reese? Like, I could see his mouth. Ryan Reese? So I walk straight over to him, and he's all, what are you doing here? I'm all, I'm on the other block with the rape bombs over there, and I we, I just led someone to the Lord. We're praying with people. I'm like, people are giving their life to Christ, and they're, like, actually having a great relate. Like, like ministry's happening one block. He's like, really? I go, yeah, one block that way. We're, we're, we're set up over there. And I go, How, how's it going? Are, are you people giving their life to the Lord? He's like, no. And I'm like, like looking at, I'm, I'm like hoping he's like reading my mind. Like, I wonder why ministry is happening literally one block away right. with all these Christians, rave moms that are ministering. We're praying with people, I, and I pull my phone out. I go, look, and he's looking at the rave moms praying for the ravers, and they're they're bowing their head. I'm like, that's literally happening one block up, and here, no one's stopping. Everyone's flipping you off, yelling at you. They're doing all this stuff, and you haven't led anyone to the Lord, and all you're doing is basically that these people are spreading hate. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then I walked and I just left. And he was just, he was just like dumbfounded. Yeah. It's like holiness is for Christians. Yeah. Holiness is for people that have the Holy Spirit. And it's like 1 Corinthians 5, Paul says, we're to judge the body, not unbelievers. Correct. He said, you're, you're not supposed to associate with people that do all of these sins, right? And he says, I'm not talking about the world. I'm talking about someone that calls themselves a brother. Exactly. Do not even break bread with that person. Yeah. But if I was talking about the world, there'd be nowhere for you to go. Right. And it's like, we're not... Meaning you need dude, to be with them. <laughs> it's just like, you're supposed to be... You can hold a Christian to a standard. Yeah. Like, hey, man, like this is not right in your life. And this is what you got to work on. And, like, and, and we're supposed to pursue holiness. Right. But we, are, we do... That's after right. they've met Christ. Mm -hmm. Right? Jesus was like meeting with prostitutes. And he... And he uh, Zacchaeus, he sees in the tree, I'm coming to have dinner at your house tonight. Right. Tax collector. Tax collector, yeah. chief of the tax collectors, right? And it's like, Jesus went and met with people in their brokenness. Mm -hmm. They didn't change. They didn't become holy. They mm -hmm. didn't 
clean up their lives until after he did it, after meeting him. And that's like what we're, what we're called to do. That's evangelism. It's not, it's not the other way around. You know, it's the, the, the Bible actually says from the religious leaders, they said, why does Jesus eat with such scum? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Friend right? of sinners. Yeah. Friend of sinners, such scum and depends what translation you read. But yeah, Jesus was there with them. And he was there evangelizing him and witnessing to him. Because he loved but him. This is the end of the show. Uh, dude, thank you guys for being on, you guys. I want to encourage you guys go to thewhosoevers.com. Look us up. Invite us out to do ministry. Get involved with Zeal School Ministry and Restore. We love you guys. Thank you guys for being on the show. And we'll talk to you guys next week. Peace. This has been The Ryan Reese Show. To connect and find out more about Ryan. Click on ryan-reese.com. Check us out next Saturday at 9 p.m. for The Ryan Reese Show.